Hello, welcome to session number 19 in the series Microwave and Millimeter Wave Circuit Design. I'm Anurag Nigam and in this session I'm going to talk about linearity. It's a very important concept when it comes to data throughput rate, right? It is directly related to uh, data throughput rate of a system, right? So now let's uh, look at uh, first the concept of linearity and then we will look at uh, you know uh, what are the repercussions of a non-linear system on a on a system performance so first of all what i'll do is i will create a new schematic right and i want to show you what is the non-linearity okay here i'm going to say <coughs> compression so we are going to study compression okay So here I'm going to use uh, a model which is provided with the with ADS for a gain stage and then I will also show the limitations of this model and later on we will put the realistic design right so for example here there is a amplifier here right now in this amplifier you have got uh, S11 you can specify and I can so DB2 polar right so db polar let's see the return losses minus 10 right and then s22 db2 polar db2 polar and the return losses minus uh, 10 and s21 i can also do db2 polar right so i can copy paste right and this I can put a big number like minus 50 or something right and I need not give an angle to it okay so now this is there I can also specify a nice figure if I want to use this gain stage as a LNA and NF min but I want to look at if this was a, uh, a power stage now in this case there's something called TOI and SOI now I'll talk to you about TO and SOI after I have plotted it. But for now, let's say that there is something called compression, 1 dB compression point, gain 1 dB gain compression point. And that compression point is, uh, let's say, 30, 30 dBm. So then TOI is 41, which is 11 higher than that. These are just, you know, from experience, the numbers are. And then SOI is 15, 14 above that. So 41, 51. Uh, plus 4 that is 55 okay so this is doi and dbm and soi and dbm and we can specify p set am to pm am to am am to pm and all that so i'll talk about non-linearity in terms of this but for now let us consider that this is our and i'm going to display these also soi and toi and later i'll explain what they are so we have a stage here which is a gain stage and i'm going to put here uh, a power source so, so sources frequency domain and i have a single tone so i'm going to put only one sine wave right that's what it's meant by single tone and the power i will say is <coughs> rf pwr let me put here capital f i'm used to that and then the frequency I'm going to put here is going to be RF FREQ. RF. Okay. So these are the two unknowns. So I have to create two variables. Okay. So the two variables which I'm going to create uh, is using var. So I have RF power. And then I have RF frequency. And let's say that this frequency is 6.5 gigahertz. So I'm talking about the extended Wi-Fi 6E extended band. So that's the center frequency roughly. And say OK. So that's been done. Then I can connect directly as an input here. But I won't do that. Right. What I'll do is uh, I am going to put here a circulator. So I'll go to system passive. So I want to see the return loss, right? So I'll go to system signal integrity system passives. Now, if I put a circulator here, an ideal circulator, 
okay by default so i don't have a frequency response here i don't ha i'm not specifying any loss if i want i can specify some loss let's say all these losses can be you know some value like 0.1 db so it is not a passive uh, it is it is still going to complain if the numbers don't add up so if the numbers like you know the norm of the s parameter matrix should be one if it doesn't happen then it is going to complain okay and these are 50 ohm ports right so basically these are all 50 ohm so this is an ideal circulator and the f function of the circulator is it always uh, does a conduction clockwise and anti-clockwise doesn't do conduction check passivity yes okay so that's a circulator here so i'm going to move the text up f5 and here i'm going to measure the reflected power okay so the input power is rf power pwr when the reflected power i have to compute so i will need a uh, a probe so a dc probe so no let's look at the probe components okay so there is a probe component here i'm going to probe the current rf current sorry <laughs> and i will name this as iref right and this termination is into 50 right so i'll go to lump components and put a 50 ohm termination right and then i'm also going to name this node as vref so whenever you need to, uh, you know, collect the data as a voltage, you have to note the name, name the node. And when you want to correct the current data, you have to uh, put a probe. So this is VRAF. Okay, so this is done. And then it is going to put power into, into the, the load. So I'm going to copy this one and rotate it out. And here I will call this as I out or I, I out and then there is a resistor here and i am going to have the load 50 ohm and this i am going to say is v out the voltage at the output node is v out sorry so now this is done okay so so I'm going to put power into this and I'm going to find out the output power. So I'll write the equation for the output power. So you have to go. So I'm going to do a harmonic balance simulation on this. So go to simulation harmonic balance. And in this equation, in this, I have to specify the frequency. So uh, the frequency is RF FREQ. Notice that, you know, the, the, the unit has to still be provided. So that's there and then I'm going to sweep the the power right so input power RF PWR RF power I'm going to sweep and this compression is around 30 and the gain I have put zero I'll put it gain of 30 so don't worry about that so I have to simulate up to at least uh, from let's say from minus 30 so to up to let's say 5 or something like that right and I will have this point says 0 0.2 or something like that right so I have 176 points okay so the gain I am specifying here is a, a 30 dB gain on this PA or let's say a 20 dB gain on this PA okay it's a matter of your choice when you are a system designer you know you work with certain gain budget and a power budget so basically this number comes from there so don't worry about that okay so now i think we are all set for simulation now one more thing i want to do is write the equation for output power so i will go to measurement equations okay so you can use measurement equations to to compute uh, you know uh, compute certain parameters okay so power is is half real of half times of real of v out into conjugate of i out so v out into conjugate of i out so currents are usually saved as 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 a cell right so basically i out dot i will contain the current data 
so this is p out and this is going to be a dc fundamental and all the harmonics because this is this is sign you are putting in a sine wave but the output will not be a sine wave after a certain power level so once you sweep the power and the the pa compresses becomes non linear then the output is not a sine wave right it will have all other harmonics also so what you have here is you are computing all the powers now p out in dbm would be 10 times of log 10 of log 10 of p out so i'm computing you can so you can also use a ready made function called dbm usually it works with the voltage with power i would write 10 log 10 of p out plus 30 so 30 means 1 milliwatt reference is 1 milliwatt that's why plus 30 so this is the power level okay and then i have to also specify the gain right so the gain in db gain in db would be equal to p out dbm of fundamental p out dbm of fundamental so in this case the fundamental is a is index of 1 right minus rf power rf power right so that would be the the gain in db and then i also want to know the return loss right so i will say p ref is equal to the same stuff right so i'll say add i will just copy this control c and control v okay so in this case i am interested in v ref only fundamental component of this and i i ref only fundamental component of this okay and i am looking at at the index one which is the fundamental component and say add or rather i will cut this out okay so now i would want this in dbm the uh, dbm right so dbm that is going to be 10 log 10 of p ref 10 times of log 10 of p ref right 10 times of log 10 of p ref plus 30 okay so this is p ref in dbm and then the return loss rl rl in db is going to be equal to p ref in dbm p ref in dbm minus uh, your incident power rf power so that will be this return loss in db and say okay so we have written all the equations here right for measurement now uh, we are ready for simulation unless something goes wrong in the equations it will go through so now i have to also sweep the rf power so rf power and sweeping from minus 30 to 5 so that should capture the so the compression is around so no it will not capture because gain is 20 so i have to put here at least 12 okay so at least i have to sweep up to 12 right say so, okay and i'm going to hit simulate okay so there is some problem with pref dbm return loss okay there is underscore dbm isn't it p ref underscore dbm yeah that's okay so let's do this again okay so this time there is no warning so let's look at p out okay p out in dbm and this one i am going to plot only the fundamental component of it so you will notice that this gain is 20 so when you put minus 30 it is minus 30 minus 20 minus 30 when you put then the output is minus 10 so the gain is 20 here so let's plot the gain and i'll plot this gain on the right hand side axis okay so now there is a gain compression rows okay so the gain starts compressing somewhere here itself it's a soft compression it's not a hard compression right so if you put here a marker okay so the gain over here is 19.9 .9. okay 0.9 because there is a loss of 0.1 on this circulator right so if there is a loss of 0.1 
so that's why the power is going to be less right so the gain is going to be less by 0.1 okay 19.9 so i have to look at 18.9 so 18.9 is over over here okay so the gain has 18.9 so the gain has compressed from 19.9 to 18.9 so this compression is 1 db so this is called cw performance okay so let me put here a line okay so okay so this is 1 db compression 18.9 right so why this is 1 db compression because this is uh so if you if you look at this distance okay so let me also change this one more thing i will change uh preferences grid uh, 0 0.0625 and one and save and okay i don't want to save it that's okay apply okay okay so so this distance okay i cannot put an arrow here so i'm going to put just a line here and i will make this red color line thicker okay so this distance is 1 db so the gain basically has compressed by 1 db and this has compressed at a input power of 11.2 and at that time the output power would be 11.2 plus 18.9 isn't it okay so if you put another form of a marker here this is another form of a marker if you put at 11.2 that marker so 11.2 plus 18.9 right so the compression 1 db compression is around 30 and the thumb rule which i used to get that compression was toi is going to be 11 db above that and soi is going to be 14 db above that okay so now i have so you understand uh, what is the thumb rule here now i'll explain you what is toi and soi right after we go to the the two-tone simulation you will come to know toi and si from a cw uh, information all you have is the gain and the return loss so let's plot the return loss and the return loss is minus 10 because you programmed it to be minus 10 right now there is a issue the issue is the following okay across power the return loss is a constant usually in practical circuits this is not what happens the return loss varies with the power so this is a limitation of this model so return loss is not changing with power next thing is i want to look at the phase okay phase of v out okay so i want to look at the phase of v out so i'll take the fundamental component phase uh, phase of fundamental component so okay so i think that's the one okay the phase is zero of course there is some uh, this variation this variation is the the what is called the epsilon of the machine right but then this is zero right it's 10 raised to minus 30 so it's a zero it's a flat zero so so the phase is also not changing with power so neither the return loss is changing with power nor the phase so what this tells you this tells you that if you are to use this model to 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 model the non-linearity of a system then it is going to be off because there is no am pm conversion which you are going to see here realistic right there is only am am conversion which you're going to see so i'll i'll come to what is am am pm later on so don't worry about it so at this point all you need to know is that this model which they have provided okay will only give you return loss in gain and then you can specify compression okay and what is a compression okay so what is the source of the compression so what happens is as you increase the input power the output power is gain times of the input power right so the output power is going to increase linearly but then there would come a point where the supply voltage q 
cannot supply that much of power to, to the transistor or maybe the transistor channel is restricting the current so either the current of the device is limited or the voltage is limited by the supply so because of that the dc power cannot go up so when the dc power cannot go up then the gain so basically if the dc power cannot go up then uh, the output power basically cannot go up beyond a certain point so even if you increase the input power the output power is going to increase only to a, a, some extent okay because of the limitation of the dc power okay it is going to linearly increase as long as the dc power is sufficient to supply it that much power and beyond that it is going to compress so the gain basically drops down so that's what you are seeing here and we have specified gain indirectly using TOISOI, which I'll tell you later on in two-tone. So by this, you would have understood that using this is, is not good for, because it is going to give you only amplitude compression. What about the phase? The phase information is not there. In realistic transistors, you will see the phase information also there. And I'll tell you that the, the linearity is more affected by the phase rather than by the amplitude right so we will come across this once we do the practical pa designs we will come across this okay so by this time uh, i have cleared what is called the cw now i want to do a two-tone simulation so i'll explain you what is a two-tone okay so inside instead of putting a single frequency i put two frequencies right so when i put two frequencies what's going to happen okay so so this is what we have plotted right now okay so this is what we have plotted the the blue one here is the gain and the red one here is the gain and then the output power you are not seeing this kind of compression because this is like four five db compressed till you re hit the saturation p set if you increase the number of points here so instead of going to 12 let's say i go to 18 right and you will see that kind of compression there also and when you go and hit that so you are going to see that this is behaving the red one is behaving similar to what I have plotted here the, the blue one here okay so this is the output power this one okay this blue one is the output power right and here the red one is the output power so let me remove this line this will create a confusion Okay, so this is one dB compression point, and then beyond that, you have a nonlinear nature. Now, to to model a nonlinear nature, you can say P out is G1 times of P in. So in this region, which is the linear region, okay, G out is P uh, sorry P out is G1 times of P in. So that's a linear region. But then there are other coefficients also. Okay, P out is also proportional to G2 P in square g3 p in cube and g4 p in 4 so that's basically to model the nonlinear nature the nonlinear nature over here so in the linear reason it is uh, the other effects are other effects can be neglected they are very small okay so p out is g1 times of p in so that's the linear region then once you the device starts compressing you have to you have to bring into picture the other other components also so g2 p in square g3 p in cube and g4 p in 4 and all that right so let us consider first just the second term so if you consider the second term okay so let's say p in is made up of two components p1 and p2 well p1 is a1 cos of twice of f1 t plus phi1 and a2 is equal to uh, p2 is equal to a2 cos of 2 pi f2 t plus phi 2 and let's say p in is equal to p1 plus p2 so i am assuming two tones as p in equal to p1 plus p2 two tones so the square term right so what will happen to the square term okay so basically the p out is going to be g1 times of a1 cos of 2 pi f1 t plus phi 1 so this is the linear component and then sec second tone also has a linear gain so this is the linear component what about the square term okay so the square term would be okay p out 2 which is g2 times of cos of this okay so cos cos of a plus cos of b 
right? It will be a square plus b square plus twice of ab, right? So that's what I'm trying to show here. Okay, so if I do a cos of f1 cos of omega 1 t plus cos of omega t 2, 2 t square, that will give you cos of omega 1 t 1 uh, cos of omega 1 t square, cos of omega 2 t square. So these are the two harmonics, right? And then it will be twice of cos of omega 1 t into cos of omega 1 2 t. So if I look at cos of omega 1 t and 2 t, so if I take the product of two causes here, one would be cos of omega 1 minus omega 2 t. Other will be cos of omega 1 plus omega 2 t. So I have generated two frequencies here omega 1 t minus omega 2 t so f f1 minus f2 is one frequency which is generated and f1 plus f2 is another frequency which is generated and then if you have cos square then the cos square theta is 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 so basically this is going to be second harmonic so a square will give you omega or f1 square or f, twice of f1 a square will give you twice of f1 and b square will give you twice of f2 so these are the two harmonics f for the two tones f1 and f2 then the two harmonics is twice of f1 and twice of f2 they are coming from this cos square term cos square theta is equal to 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 and so so that that would be the factor of 1 so let's look at the other one okay so that's the factor of 1 which comes in here 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 right 1 plus 1 is half plus half is going to be 1 then it will be a1 square by 2 cos of twice of twice of f1 and then a2 square by 2 cos of twice of f2 so this is going to be twice of f1 and f2 are going to be the two harmonics twice of f1 twice of f2 right and then there will be f1 plus f2 somewhere in between right that will be because of cos of cos of a into cos of b this is cos of a plus b by 2 plus cos of a minus b by 2 right so one term would be one term would be f1 plus f2 or f2 plus f1 and there will be f2 minus f1 and a1 a2 cos of right f f2 plus f1 and f2 minus f1 similarly the phase phases will be phi 2 plus phi 1 and phi 2 minus phi 1 right so for now you can ignore all the phases here what you can assume is that uh, a second order mixing so this is called a second order mixing so if you see the formula so this raised to 2 and this raised to 2 is coming from <coughs> sorry so the raised to 2 is coming from this p in square and p in is p1 plus p2 and p1 is a1 cos of omega 1 t plus phi 1 and p p2 is is going to be cos a2 cos of omega 2 t plus phi 2 and p1 plus p2 is going to be uh, multiplied with g1 for the linear term and multiplied with g2 uh, a p1 plus p2 square or p in square so that is square is a second order mixing and that is square in two tone case would res result in second harmonics f1 twice of f1 twice of f2 and then the sum of the two frequencies f1 plus f2 and then f2 minus f1 that it is going to generate right and then so there are linear outputs and then there are these harmonics and sum and difference frequencies okay so this would happen if you consider a square term now if i assume a cube term right so in a cube term what do you have in a cube term a plus b cube is a cube plus thrice of a square thrice of a square b plus thrice of a b square plus b cube so now a cube will result in third harmonic of f1 b cube will result in third harmonic of f2 then a a2 a square b term will result in twice of f2 plus f1 and twice of f2 minus f1 or you can understand right and then a b square will result in twice of f1 minus f2 and twice of f1 plus f2 okay so 
so then with the third mixing the terms which will be generated are going to be thrice of f1 thrice of f2 so they are coming from a square and b square then thrice of a square b and thrice of a b square is going to result in twice of f1 plus f2 <coughs> and twice of f2 plus f1 so they are will be near the third harmony but then there will be difference terms twice of f1 minus f2 and twice of f2 minus f1 now these two terms they are called intermod products okay and these intermod products okay uh, would be smaller than these linear components so the linear output is f1 and f2 and then these twice of f f1 minus f2 and twice of f2 minus f1 will be close to f1 f2 right so they will be adjacent right so in in case of odd order mixing okay these terms which come close by so let's say f1 is equal to f2 then what is going to happen the the components will so if i make f1 equal to f2 then they will be on top of each other like this and then also twice of f2 minus f1 would also come on top of each other right like this right so all this will come on top of each other right if f1 is equal to f2 now if f1 is slightly offset okay then they will be not coming on top of each other they would be adjacent nearby like this okay and this gap is basically going to be your f1 minus f2 gap okay on both sides so if you put two tones they are going to give you two more tones which are adjacent and this is because of odd order mixing now let us see what happens with the fifth order mixing right so if i go back to the the formula okay if you see this bring to front okay so if you see this a raised to 5 will give you fifth harmonic but a raised to 4 b will give you will give you what will give you uh, close to uh, third harmonic isn't it and then a cube b square this will give you the term adjacent to your band and then a square b cube because the difference is one so if the difference is one then this will result in components this will result in components which will be near to the the fun, fundamental components f1 f2 they will be adjacent because they are differing only by by f1 minus f2 right they are differing only by f1 minus f2 on both sides so so what you will get here is also two components which will be thrice of f2 minus twice of f1 and thrice of f1 minus twice of f2 which will be on top of which will be on top of these components sorry which will be on top of these components because they are differing by f2 minus f1 the difference between the two tones and here raised to 5 will have two components which will be lying on top of that right and then this will be the third order uh, near to the third third harmonic and then this will be the fifth harmony b raised to 5 fifth harmony so you can see that all the odd harmonics all or all, all the odd order mixing in a two tone case on all odd order mixings will result in components which are adjacent to your two frequency components okay they will be on top of each other now the relative phase okay it plays an important role so let's say that this component is from the third order and there comes in another component okay which is kind of out of phase like this right this comes out of phase like this here um, and this is coming from thrice of f2 minus twice of f1 so this component is coming from thrice of f2 minus twice of f1 so it will also land up on the same frequency but let's say it comes out 180 degree out of phase and then the net resultant would be zero the net resultant would be this won't exist does it mean that this became more linear no so this spectral regrowth is an indication of non-linearity but it is is it a true sense of non-linearity answer is no because you have all the the components which are mixed up 
okay because this is landing on top of that similarly i can do also four times of f2 minus three times of f1 that will also come on this at the same frequency right and depending on the relative phases it might cancel out okay now so there are two things which you have to consider one is the order of mixing okay so the, where is the order of the mixing coming from square will give you second order mixing q will give you third order mixing raised to four will, will give you fourth order mixing raised to five will give you fifth order mixing and the formulas we are going to use here is a plus b square a plus b cube a plus b raised to four a plus b raised to five and then you can see what are the different frequency components which are generated right and the ones which are close to the spectrum are going to be differing by f2 minus f1 right so so all the mixing will result in components which are close which are on the same frequency which is f2 minus f1 the same frequency all these components will come over here right and then it depends on the relative phases so is is two tone a, a, a good measure of linearity answer is no because there is no phase information here right the phase information is missing and for this model it is totally missing because there is no variation with power of the phase output phase is flat zero so this model is not good for modeling the linearity it is going to give you half the picture which is amplitude what about the other half of the picture which is phase right so that's there and i'll show you this in the practical circuit what is going to happen okay so now we have understood that mixing results in components odd order mixing basically results in components which are adjacent now let's go one more step further and assume that instead of having two tones i have a continuous spectrum which is your channel of interest which is this green one and then all the odd order mixing is giving you this and this adjacent channels now one side the the adjacent adjacent channel in the adjacent channel the power is less other side the adjacent channel power is more now this asymmetry may be because of maybe because of the relative phases in which these components come right so the the relative phase for twice of f2 minus f1 and twice thrice of f2 minus f1 might add up while that for twice of f1 minus f2 and twice of f2 minus f1 might subtract in some way so then these adjacent the power put into adjacent channels is not going to be even right i expect it to be even but it is not going to be so so what this diagram is instead of using two tones if i was to use a continuous spectrum as a channel then the power will be spilled by that channel in the adjacent channel and this is because of the non linearity of the the gain so the gain if you see is compressing the the, the non linear region is the cause of this this thing adjacent channel now can i put a filter around it answer is no because the filter is for the system bandwidth not for the channel bandwidth right so if you if you want to put a filter you will need a very sharp cut off filters here and then that to they have to be parametric they have to sweep otherwise you cannot do the channel selection right okay so the filters which are there in the system they are for the system bandwidth not for the channel bandwidth so there is no protection against the spectral regrowth right there is no protection against the spectral regrowth right and then this will cause interchannel interference so if this is the channel and then there is another channel okay which is over here okay so let's let's uh, basically give it a transparency <laughs> format shape fill fill line is this the fill now this is the line transparency fill transparency okay <laughs> so what do you see here so my adjacent channel is over here and there is another adjacent channel on the other side okay now both the channels which are on the other side now are in problem because you have the channel power but then you also have the adjacent 
channel spilling power into this channel so we have a problem right so that's why if you want to have an effective use of your spectra then the, the system has to be linear okay no amount of filtering will get rid of that spilled power so that's why if you want to use all the channels very close by <clears throat> then there are no guard bands right so for example in a system if i introduce a guard band like this okay so if i introduce a guard band then only this small overlap portion is the power spilled into the the channel on both the sides okay so this is the role of the guard band so if you have a guard band if you have a guard band then you can reduce the interchannel interference right but then if you want to have a good spectral efficiency like for example 3 gpp you do not have a guard band so if you do not have a guard band then the linearity has to be more strict otherwise the spectral regrowth will cause a lot of interchannel interference right so you understood why linearity of a system is important linearity of a system is important because of the spectral efficiency you want to put in more channels in a given bandwidth right now you can have these to be orthogonal but then you are also transmitting the iq which we will talk later on so you are already utilizing sine as well as cos so how can you do this orthogonal right so so that's the the limitation is on the the linearity the system has to be linear to minimize interchannel interference because of the spectral regrowth okay so you understood spectral regrowth now let's look at a special case okay and the special case is f1 is equal to f2 so in i will not consider even even order mixing only order mixing so i have already discussed that case so basically this and this f1 is equal to f2 that means everything comes back within the band something of this nature okay so when things come back in their band then the spectrum is correlated right so when the spectrum is correlated then it is not called intermodulation this is called in modulation so you understand intermodulation means i'm talking about two channels which are non correlated so let's look at this one the two channels the channel green channel which is over here so let me do it again so this is the baseband information around the carrier right so let's do this again format shape fill transparency okay so now this channel and the original green channel okay the baseband information is uncorrelated so this gives you some kind of a uh, safety in a sense let's say if you if it was a, a mimo thing right in mimo when you divide a uh, 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 fast bit stream into slower bit streams you make sure that the the amount of correlation between the 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 channels is zero okay that's the principle of mimo right so now in this case what is going to happen they are going to be uncorrelated baseband okay so then this interference to some level is not going to hurt you so much but if this was coming in band like you know if this was coming something like this okay so is it a good thing or a bad thing it really depends on the phase in which it is coming okay so these are all correlated bands now so basically if f1 is equal to f2 is the same as you are going to get in modulation or you are going to get within band you are going to get the the components so that can be represented as a phasor so let's go back and undo this don't worry about this okay so this is intermodulation case so in modulation case let's say that there is a phasor representation of a carrier so one is e raised to minus j omega t which is going clockwise like this right and at the same time the other one is uh, e raised to plus j omega t which is going counterclockwise right so e raised to plus j omega t plus e raised to minus j omega t by 2 is going to give you a cos okay so we are talking about cos right 
so a1 so we are talking about a1 cos of 2 pi f1 t plus phi 1 and then the second tone is also a1 cos of 2 pi f1 t plus phi phi 1 or for example phi 2 right so the two tones f1 and f2 are the same right so that mixing would be come in band and that will be a phasor which will come on top of this so in this case the phasor is also has a e raised to minus g omega t component which is going this way and then you are also going to have e raised to plus g omega t which is going this way simultaneously right so basically they represent cos and then there is another component which is again cos which is on top of this right so now if they come in phase so you see the red one the brown one right so they are coming in same phase as the the original phaser then both the phasers are going clock and anti-clockwise for the the main component as well as the mix component okay so this will result in this thing which will be doing so when it is going round like this so it is also wobbling it is wobbling in amplitude right so it is wobbling in amplitude as well as it is going round like this so this will cause a amplitude modulation okay so if this amplitude modulation is is basically referred to as am to am conversion so basically the net resulting amplitude of this phaser when it goes round is not constant but it is kind of wobbling it is kind of wobbling because of the 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 mix component and as it is coming in phase in phase with both components then the phase variation is not there it's only the amplitude which is modulated correct so it is just the amplitude which gets modulated right so this is called am to am conversion now let's assume that it comes off phase like this one now what is going to happen that the phaser phaser is going round round like this but not with a uniform phase or uniform velocity it is also basically dangling like this because why is it dangling like that because this component which is mixed component is not coming in phase so its respective phasers its respective phasers e raised to plus j omega t how do i select it its respective favors uh, this this is not only cause the amplitude variation but also will cause the the phase variation on this phaser the main phaser so this would be not only amplitude modulation but also the phase modulation so this will be called am to pm conversion right so in modulation means that your uh, your mix components are coming in band and if they have a correlated information right then it might be good it might not be good okay it might be good if it's just amplitude modulation fine it is good it's okay but if it is phase modulation am to pm conversion then you have additional you know spectral regrowth or additional thing which is happening to the constellation so i'll come to constellation next after this treatment okay so you understood that what is am to am and am to pm conversion right so now the next thing which comes is is quam system okay so now the 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 thing is you can modulate you can modulate uh, uh, a channel right so you can modulate the data right the data can modulate the 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 carrier so if it modulates just the amplitude this is called amplitude modulation if it modulates the phase this is called phase modulation right now if i bunch up two bits into one symbol then two bits represent four states right now what those four states are going to be looking like so if i was to consider four states so this is like 16 states so let's say four states only sorry it's difficult to pick up it's easier to draw see it is so difficult to pick up easier to draw come on okay okay what i wanted didn't come okay so let's look at the phaser representation right so in case i am bunching two bits two digital bits so basically here you see that there is a 
serial in and then I am bunching them as 4 bits here. So instead I am bunching them as 2 bits. So 2 bits can be represented by 4 states and these 4 states these 4 states can be given 45 degrees apart. Maximum apart is going to be 90 degrees apart in this case, right? So this is a 90 degree apart. Okay, so what this represents? It represents that if I have a symbol, for example, and that symbol is 0, 0. So I am clubbing two bits at a time, right? So I can club 0, 0. Then I can club 0, 1. And 1, 0. And 1, 1. So these are the four states, right? 1, 0. Okay, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Let's say I have assigned these four states. And what is the phasor doing? The phasor basically has an amplitude. So let me put here insert a phasor. So for 0, 0, I am transmitting a carrier with certain amplitude and then a certain angle. Okay, so that angle is okay. So, that angle is over here, right? So, I am I am clubbing two bits into one symbol. And that means I have got four states for two bits. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And I assign 0, 0 to have a certain amplitude A and a phase which is 45 degrees. For 0, 1, I am assigning the same amplitude. Okay, I am assigning the same amplitude, but the phase now is 135. Okay, 90 degree out of phase. And then again, I have 90 degree offset again and 90 degree offset again. So these are my carrier phases. So this form of modulation is, is known as QAM, quadrature amplitude modulation. Okay, and the simplest one here is is QPSK. Okay, and QPSK means I am taking two bits and making one symbol. So the baud rate is going to be half of the bit rate, right? So 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 that's that's what is happening. Now, if you were to transmit this information, that is, we are going to modulate the the amplitude as well as the phase. Now, in this case of pi by, in this case of uh, uh, what you call QPSK, the amplitude is remaining constant, isn't it? So if you see for all the four states, the amplitude is a constant. Okay, what is changing is only the phase, right? And the phase is changing by 90 degrees, you see? Okay, so whenever you have a sudden change, okay, in one domain, okay, let's say if it's a phase also, then the spectral domain, it is going to spread out. So if you have a discontinuity in, in let's say time domain, it is going to spread out into frequency domain. So to, to, to represent a discontinuity in time domain, you will need more spectral components in frequency domain. Right? Now it depends on how sharp is the discontinuity. Now, if that is the case, then QPSK is very inefficient. Right? So then what you can do is you can introduce this. So let's say these are our symbols, right? So, I can't select all of them, kind of strange, don't worry. Let's put that apart for now. Okay, so you have got these four states, control C, control V. And then control C, control V. Okay, so this represents group. So this represents one group. And let's say this represents another group, right? So this represents another group. Okay, now the 90 degrees was the issue. So if 90 degrees was the issue, I introduced something like, like this. 
okay so i still have got two i still have got two bits okay but then i have two groups here okay so let's differentiate the two groups uh, format and okay so these are the two groups okay now still you have got uh, you have got two bits per symbol but now i have got four states but then there are two groups of four states right and then the transition is not not now the transition is not 90 degrees the transition is going to be cut to half which is 45 degrees so that is that is what is called dqpsk okay the amplitude is still constant the amplitude is still constant but the phase is now not transition is not 90 degrees but the transition is 45 degrees so the bandwidth is going to be less because the discontinuity is not sharp okay now one more thing you can do is your assignment doesn't need to be this 0, 0, 0, 001 1, 0, 1, 1. it can take uh, what is called the grace code in the grace code what is happening is that both bits do not change simultaneously right only one bit changes right so that's a gray code now there can be different coding so that the transitions can be the large transitions can be minimized okay so the assignment of the bin the assignment of the bin can be adjusted statistically to the signal so as to minimize the spectral spread okay so what do you mean by spectral spread okay so whenever there is a discontinuity in in time domain it is going to expand in the frequency domain that discontinuity can be amplitude as well as the phase discontinuity so if that discontinuity is small then the spectral spread of the signal is going to be less so it is going to be more spectrally more efficient so dqpsk is more efficient than qpsk so you understood why right so now so the assignment of this 0 1 1 0 1 1 and 1 and 0 1 this can be in a certain order so as to minimize the transaction so that will minimize the spectral spread and that will show up in something called peak to average ratio so we will talk about peak to average ratio later on but the, the there are things like coding why the, the, the symbols are coded the symbols are coded so as to uh, one reason is uh, you know one reason of coding is basically the the, the noise immunity the other reason of coding can be spectral efficiency right so now this is a qpsk and dqpsk case now let us look at quam 16 case so in this case i am going to bundle four four bits at a time and then i am going to have 16 bins right now to transmit these 16 bins i have a, a unique amplitude and phase so i cannot transmit in polar coordinate system right okay so what i'll do is i will convert it to rectangular that is i will convert it to i and q so instead of representing uh, uh, amplitude and phase as a phasor i represent it as i and q so when i represent this as i and q then one i am going to modulate with sine other i am going to modulate with cos and then sum it up right and then when i i want to recover it i will multiply the signal with sine i will recover i and if i multiply with signal with cos i will re recover q because sine and cos are orthogonal then when i multiply with sine the q component would be gone because integral of sine theta cos theta is is basically zero or low pass of this is going to be zero okay but if i was to have sine square theta is one plus cos two theta by two so one factor will give you i so when you do a low pass you will get back your i component when you mix the signal with sine theta you will get the i component when you mix the signal with the cos theta you will get the q component because sine and cos are orthogonal so i and q can be transmitted at the same frequency carrier right because of the orthogonality of sine and cos and then once you recover i and q you will be able to construct back your constellation and once you have your constellation you can convert it back to your symbols and then back to your 
your stream. So here the baud rate has become one fourth. Now let's say QAM 64. So there will be 64 states and 8 bits will be coded, uh, sorry, 6 bits will be coded, right? So 6 bits will be coded to give you uh, QAM 64, right? 2 raised to 6, right? So QAM 64 will, will be able to pack more data in the smaller bandwidth because the baud rate is becomes 1, uh, 1 sixth. And QAM 256, you will bunch up 4, 8 bits to make a symbol. So that means that you have 256 states in constellation, right? And, but each symbol is basically a 8 bit wide. So then the, the baud rate is 1 eighth of the bit rate. So that directly gives you the spectral efficiency. But there is a problem there. The problem is that this I and Q, the peak values of I and Q are basically restricted by the supply. Right. So let's say the supply is 3 volts, right? So this I and Q is restricted to a maximum value of, so this is a I signal and this is a Q signal, right? So one is on this X axis, other is on the Y axis. So one of them is going to modulate the, the sign, other is going to modulate the cos. Now, uh, one more thing happens, okay, that these transitions are going to be sharp. And then you will put, put here a raised cosine filter. So because you do not want the sharp transitions, right? So after filtering, then it will look like this, smooth transitions. And then you are going to do an up conversion and then you are going to do the summing, right? So this happens in the QAM systems. Now, what is 5G? A 5G physically would be, will be supporting up to QAM 256, right? So that's why your data rates are going to be large. But again, the restriction is, the restriction is, is that the supply voltage will, will limit the amplitude of I and Q. And in the next slide, that's what I'm going to show you. So let's say there is a constellation which is the green one. And once I demodulate it, then IQ had a certain imbalance. Okay, so the phase imbalance will show up like a rotation of the constellation. And the amplitude imbalance will cause it to skew. And the compression, so amplitude compression, so if you see the, the other one, which is over here, the green one is the transmitted one and the red one is the received one. Now, if you see this, this response, if you are in the linear region, then your constellation green and red will be overlapping. But if you are in this nonlinear region, then the amplitudes which are large, which is basically these corners, they will be pushed in. So, more the compression, more they will be pushed in, you see. So, they will be pushed in like this. The more the compression, the more they will be pushed in. So, you understood what is happening here, right. So, as you keep on compressing the PA, these corner constellations will push in. Now, the corner symbols or the bins. Now, if there was a phase which will also cause its rotation, so it might come this way and this might come closer to this one and then this might come closer to this one and this might come closer to that one. Now, if it comes very close, you would not be able to distinguish this symbol which was transmitted this symbol and received this one. So now, can you distinguish between this one and this one? Answer is no. Okay, so now what is going to happen is you have a certain amplitude which you are transmitting. So insert shape. Okay. So from the center, this was the amplitude and then there was the phase. But what you received, what you received was this. What you received was this and this resulted in an error. Okay. So that error would be this. So this is your error vector. So you understood, you are transmitting the green one, which is the corner one, but because of the compression and because of the, the imbalance of I and Q, what you received was over here and then your vector amplitude basically got shrunk to this one and then there was an error vector here. So now that error vector, which you can see over here also in the second figure, that error vector B. So B by ve vector A, into 100 is called percentage error vector magnitude, right? 
and you can also express this as dbc as 20 log of b magnitude by a magnitude so that will be in dbc okay now there is a limitation on how much error vector can you to tolerate so what is going to happen is that this symbol which was supposed to be this green one is now detected as this green one rather than that so the symbol now is in error it is indistinguishable now from this one so it is in error so you have lost four bits okay so as you keep on increasing the 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 power you are going to compress and you are going to become nonlinear so when you become nonlinear then your bit error rate okay is going to increase or evm is increasing error vector magnitude is increasing and bit error rate will increase right so that's the problem of nonlinearity that your data throughput rate is directly affected by your nonlinearity and this is arising because of the amplitude compression as well as the phase distortion right and this phase distortion in this you are not seeing the phase distortion in this symbol so this this uh, what they have provided here as an amplifier model it is really useless for your for simulation system simulation because it is giving you only half the information which is amplitude it is not giving you any phase information here right so this you will see in the realistic systems right so you understood that how the nonlinearity affects directly the data throughput rate because if the symbol is in error you would have to retransmit it right so you would have lost the the throughput rate right so this is the true measure of nonlinearity the bit error rate or evm is the true measure of nonlinearity and what is not the true measure of nonlinearity is your is your acpr okay so i'll i'll tell you one more thing okay some terminologies okay so the terminology goes this way okay so these are two im products intermod products okay im3 because this is third order mixing so im3 there are two products okay and then they, these are your fundamental tones which which is linear components so if you were to have plot uh, this gain versus or gain and output power versus input power right so what is going to happen linear region and then compression so the gain is compressing now if you take this line which is a linear gain and extend it and then if you take the intermod components now the intermod components okay because there is a cube power right so in db they will be growing at three times the rate because that cube will come out as three times of 10 log 10 off right three times of 10 log 10 off so the intermod components will be growing faster than the the gain component so these intermod components uh, are going to grow so if i take that gain and extend it so the point where the the linear gain component mix uh, becomes equal to the intermod gain component or intermod component that uh, that is known as toi or third order intercept and that third order intercept is usually 11 db higher than the 1 db compression point okay and same thing you can refer in the second order intercepts in the second order intercept the 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 second order components which are second harmonic near to second harmonic in dc they are going to grow twice the size uh, twice the rate than the linear gain because there is a square term so which comes out to 10 log 10 off right so it is twice in db okay so the the point where they are going to intersect right that point is called soi and that is going to be 14 db above 11 db 11 to 14 db above 11 db uh, above toi okay so that's what i did here okay so if the compression is 30 then toi is 30 plus 11 which is 41 and then soi is 41 plus 14 that is 55 okay so over here you can see that what i meant by toi and soi okay so in two tone case you can consider toi and soi as the expression of your nonlinearity in one single tone case it is the 1 db compression point and there is a relationship 1 db compression point 
and TOI is going to be 11 dB more than 1 dB compression point and SOI is going to be 11 to 14 dB more than the TOI. Okay, so that's how that keeping that as this, I was able to get 30 dBm as 1 dB compression point. So you understood this maths, uh, why I in the model I put TOI SOI, while in single tone I got this, this compression. Okay, so let me see how much time I have spent. I already spent one hour. Okay, so I have explained to you, okay, linearity in terms of compression, which is CW case or a single tone case. I have explained to you non-linearity in terms of two-tone case or intermodulation case. I have also explained to you non-linearity in terms of in-modulation state case, which is AM, AM, PM conversion. I have also explained to you uh, non-linearity in terms of ACPR. Now, let's clarify that. Okay, so basically you have got this component. So if it is a continuous spectrum, you will also get continuous spectrum. So the difference between the main channel and the adjacent channel, how much power you spilled in the adjacent channel is called ACPR or adjacent channel power ratio. And if you look at the third channel over here, so if you leave one channel in between, that will be called alternate channel power ratio. Okay, so this is called ACPR. So spectral regrowth is is the is one of the phenomena. And that spectral regrowth can be seen as inter IM3 components or IP3 components or the adjacent channel spill out. Okay, so this is half the story because the real story is, is bit error rate and EVM. Okay, this is what you are concerned about. Okay, and why it is half the picture? Because the, 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 the mixed component due to third order and fifth order and seventh order, they are overlapping. So, if their relative phases are going to decide what is spilled into the next channel. So, it is not a true measure of non-linearity. It might cancel out and you may think that ACPR is really good, then the amplifier is very linear, but your EVM and beta rate numbers may be very bad. Okay. So, the true measure of non-linearity is not ACPR or intermod products. It is the EVM or it is the beta rate. Okay, because that depends on the statistics of the signal, while this one ha doesn't have that phase information on different harmonic mixing, right? So ACPR is not a true measure of nonlinearity for a given communication system. EVM and bit error rate is. Okay, so I am going to stop here. In the next in the next session, I am going to do a two tone simulation, and then I am going to generate various signals, and then put them through the PA to see the non-linearity. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much.